Hi, what's up everyone? Today I am going over the in-game settings on X Defiant on PC. If you're a console player, then some of these settings will still be relevant to you, but there's a lot more on PC and there's lots of things you can change to improve that frame per second and just improve your gameplay. This is going to be very beneficial if you are playing on PC because the better the frame rate and the better the settings, it just gives you that slight edge. So I'm hoping this video is going to be helpful to you today. From the settings menu, you can see that you can alter some gameplay and UI. There's mouse and keyboard settings, controller settings, audio and voice chat, video and graphics, language and accessibility, matchmaking and account, and then ending with credits. We're going to start from the top and go all the way down. So on gameplay and UI, straight away, you've got the gameplay input. This is where you can choose your preferred in-game gameplay input, and that is going to determine who it matchmakes you against, I believe. So I've got it on mouse game mouse and keyboard because i use mouse and keyboard but if you want to use controller you can switch it to controller and that should help with the matchmaking this doesn't mean that you can't use the other though so although i've got my gameplay input as mouse and keyboard i can i can still use controller if i want and vice versa so set that how you want for field of view although this is quite um personal preference i do believe the higher the better you see more with more field of view so i go right up to 120 i think the sweet spot for this though for most players is going to be around 100 play around with that but the more the better because as i said you can see more ads field of view this just means that when you're aiming down sight that you keep it consistent with what the setting is up above when you've got it on consistent you can have it on independent if you want to but i just feel that that's going to just feel a little bit weird if you're going from like 120 to then revert to a different field of view when you're aiming down your sight so i recommend keeping that as consistent ads behavior toggle or hold most people want to keep that on hold which is by default you've got ads sensitivity transition which i have on instant instant applies your ads sensitivity multiply immediately when you activate ads which i think is important melee during ads this is by default set to off i highly recommend putting that on it just means if someone was to run around the corner while you were aiming down your site you could quickly hit melee while you're still aiming to melee them so it's quite handy aiming interrupts reload i recommend to have that as on just in case you're hitting a reload and need to quickly start firing at the enemy that just appears in front of you crouch behavior i've got to toggle sprint behavior i've got on tap auto sprint i've got off and then below here we've got some more we've got sprint interrupt reload i've set to on slide behavior tap Auto reload weapon on, auto switch weapon on, that's when you're out of ammo. Auto grab ledge I have as off. I was thinking about having this on just to test it, but I could get really annoying if you're getting close to ledges and you don't want to climb. So probably recommending that as off for you. Walk behavior I have as hold, scoreboard behavior I have as hold. You can adjust some HUD limits if you want to. I haven't messed around with them at all. Not that important. Again, that's probably going to be personal preference. Challenge notifications. This is in-game challenges that you are completing as you're playing if you want them to pop up on screen or not you can have all completion only or none i just have all so all will kind of give you um as you're going through and as you're progressing it'll give you progress reports damage numbers i have set to off because i don't find them that important this, in this game but if you do want to see your damage numbers you can turn them on and when you're shooting enemies you'll see what damage you're hitting on them enemy health bars you can turn off if you want they are on by default i keep them as on minimap rotation i have as off that that it feels very weird if you turn that on i did test that uh because of the wording but have it as off trust me uh, that is by default as well distant units you can change fps display you can have this on if you want to and what you can do with this then is check your frames per second now the idea is to get the most frames per second that you can and we're going to go over some video and graphic settings in a few moments to help you with that i am running a very old rig like very old it's seven years old it's a 1080 ti ryzen 7 i believe and uh, my frames do struggle at times on certain games doesn't struggle so much on this and with the settings i'm showing you today i've managed to get my frames between 140 and 150 the max i can have in my monitor is 165 so i'm very happy with that and you can just use this setting here to test your frames when you are testing out your settings to get your frames as high 
as possible because it is going to help you on this game ping display you can show that as well if you want network info display you can show diagnostic overlay not 100 percent what that is or team com composition overlay not really tested them by default they are off you switch them on and test them yourself if you want to but they're not going to have any real importance on your gameplay moving on to mouse and keyboard if you are using mouse and keyboard then you are going to want to adjust these settings for your liking and it's very much personal preference like i wouldn't just pick what i pick you need to pick what suits you i do have my mouse sensitivity at 54 mouse ads sensitivity is times 0.89 by default it was one let's load it a little bit and that's for like any scopes eight times zoom or lower anything higher than that on the scope it's still set as one mouse acceleration i have is off invert vertical axes i have is off right click back off lock mouse to game window on and then key bindings again this is all personal preference there's no point going through that controller settings if you are playing on controller you'll definitely definitely want to play around with this uh, i play on mouse and keyboard mainly but then when i'm out of my office i have a laptop and i use controller and i don't think i've changed these we'll change these now as we're going through now aim assist you definitely want on you can have standard or disabled so have it as standard and you've got aim assist strength zero being the strongest but if you want to bring that down a little bit you can bring it down all the way to minus 10 so i suggest if you have it as zero on both aim, as, aim assist strength and aim assist follow. That's going to give you the best aim, aim assist and have it as standard. Aim response curve type, I just have as standard. Horizontal sensitivity and vertical sensitivity. Again, this is going to be personal preference like it was with the mouse and keyboard. You want to play around with this and get it to where you want it. Uh, again, I'll probably drop the ADS sensitivity multiplier a little bit there on the low zoom and keep it the same on the high zoom what i definitely do all the time on first person shooters or even third person shooters the dead zone on your analog sticks i set to zero having a dead zone i just don't think feels right i think you should get used to the controller without any dead zone that's going to be the most responsive however if you do have stick drift or something like that then it can be a little bit annoying having no dead zone and you might just want to up this a little bit to fix the stick drift acceleration speed multiplier i'd leave that as one you don't want to invert anything unless you're one of those crazy people and controller vibration when i'm playing on controller i always turn off i don't see any point in having any distraction to you trying to aim and then audio and voice chat so these sets are quite important because you want to be able to hear enemy footsteps the best that you can so what i highly recommend is that you have your sfx volume to max as the in-game sound effects um and then anything else you want to turn a bit lower so for example dialogue volume in-game dialogue you wouldn't want that that loud that it's going to overtake any footsteps that you can hear so drop your dialogue volume to wherever you want i've gone 70 and have your sfx volume to full and with music volume and ui volume that's entirely up to you i always drop the music volume it seems very loud on this game especially when i'm in the discord with my friends so drop that to your liking as well ui don't really matter but definitely get that sfx volume on full drop the dialogue that is going to help you a little bit with hearing the footsteps while you are playing all the other settings in this is just around voice chat and things like that this is all going to be up to you and what you want it to be on you know your microphone on push to talk if you want to talk in game or whatnot so that's all personal preference video and graphics this is now where we're going to be able to improve that fps so my display mode is full screen my resolution is 1080 and my refresh rate is 165 so i can get up to 165 frames and so again between 140 and 150 where i'm at isn't so bad and it's just kind of like balancing it so that you're getting the highest frames but you're also not go in with the lower settings and there's a few settings now i'll go through that you can uh, use yourself to help you get those high frames and still keep good quality so as we go down uh, triple buffering was on by default reduce latency i put on nvidia reflex low latency i put on with boost this depends on your graphics card whether any of that's going to work but i highly recommend that the lower latency the better brightness contrast i haven't touched dx12 renderer i have as off this is just because most games i play 
especially the Division 2, it's highly recommended to have this off to stop crashing issues and things like that. So I just don't really trust it. I always just leave it off. Uh, you can play around with that though and have it on if you want and see what you think personally. It shouldn't really make any difference. HDR and all that, it's up to you and your monitor. I have it off because I stream through a capture card with no pass-through. Graphics quality, you can see it's custom because we've changed some things. V-Sync mode. I believe this is on by default and V-Sync stops screen tearing. However, if you have it off, it can really improve your performance. So I recommend having V-Sync mode off just because of those frames that we're trying to get as high as possible. And if there's no screen tear or anything like that, then you know you're good. But if you do get a lot of screen tear, you might want to come and put it back on. Frame rate limit, obviously you want to set that to off. And then we get into some settings that you just want to bring down a little bit. So we've got shadow quality. This was on ultra original or very high. I brought that down to high. Spot shadows, I brought I, I left as high as well spot shadow resolution i left as high also now shadows aren't really that important like if i really wanted to i could go down to medium on this again i'm happy with where my frames are but if my frames were lower where than what I, where I wanted them to be i'd drop shadow quality even more you can go lower who cares about shadows right you're going to see them anyway so this is a great area where you can improve your frames by just dropping your shadow quality Resolution scale I have as 100%, sharpening I have as 7. Particle detail you can see is ultra here. Uh, again, particle detail, if you want to lower this to improve your frames, this is a great area to do it. So lower it to high or even medium to get those frames higher if you want to. Uh, volumetric fog I have as high. Global reflection quality I have as medium. Local reflection quality I have as medium. Vegetation quality I have as medium. These are, again, some great settings to improve those frames per second, but not really have too much of an impact on the game you're seeing. So you're still going to see the game in, in great quality, but you're able to get some frames back here. Subsurface scattering is on. Uh, ambient occlusion is medium. Object detail, I dropped to 59. Extra streaming distance is 10 by default. Lens flare, I turn off. Water quality is high. Chromatic Aberration is on, and terrain quality, I dropped to medium. So there's a few settings I dropped there that I just went over that allow me to get the frames as high as I wanted them. You can play around with these, and the ones that I mentioned, if you just want to get the frames even more higher, just keep on making those lower until your frames are where they are at. Higher frame rate, the better. I highly recommend going as high as you can. That is going to give you the edge when you're playing on this game. Now, moving to language and accessibility. Uh, there's some accessibility options here. I've not changed any of this. This is just all standard, but you've got colorblind mode if you want that. There's a flashbang effect. You can have bright or dark. So this is pretty cool. I noticed on the Division 2 recently that they changed the bright flashbang to a dark one, and everyone thought the game was broke when they did it. But it's a nice feature. And in this game, you can actually choose whether you want it bright or dark, which is cool. You can change the menu text contrast, the menu narration. There's chat window, chat language filter, chat speech to text, chat text to speak, uh, chat audio cues, and chat audio cues volume. And then matchmaking on account, you can turn crossplay on or off here. So if you don't want to play with people across other platforms, make sure you switch this off. But it is on by default. And the input based matchmaking is on or off. So what I mentioned before about the gameplay and ui where you're choosing your gameplay input if you have input based matchmaking on here it is gonna go towards whatever your in preferred input is so you can kind of i'm guessing i don't know let me know in the comments if you watch this video and you get this far but if i was to have matchmaking for input based matchmaking on and i said my preferred was controller but i use keyboard and mouse is it still going to put me against controller players very interesting, might be worth testing. But I have it off anyway. I'm not. I don't personally care who I play. I'm not. I'm not sweat or anything like that. I just want to have fun and uh, try and improve. So I just have that off a cross play on. But again personal preference and then you finally have the credits for X Defiance. If you want to have a look at all the great people that have worked on this game. That is it for this video. Video now. I do hope you took something away from it. Let me know down in the comments if you have done. Share any advice that you may have as well for anybody else that may watch this video. Thank you. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe for more content, and until the next one, take care and peace out.